It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, June the 26th. Loggins with the danger zone. That's a kickoff to the week, huh? <laughs> You're in the danger zone, Man, baby. Man, I don't know if we've really entered the danger zone, but hell, it's Monday morning. It's the crack of dawn on a Monday. I guess it could be worse. Um, I'll let you know if I come up with, with how, cause boy, I was sleeping really soundly last night. Usually I'm struggling on Sunday nights. Last mm-hmm. night, for whatever reason, out like a light, man, in a deep, comforting, rewarding sleep. <laughs> and then I wake up and I come into work and then I, and I see Brian Zepp, my, my good friend who's bitching about hot dogs on the <laughs> lake. And I'm just confused. Now I'm confused, but what is going on with you and these hot dogs? It's the idea of it. And someone's about to correct me on the Maple Grove lock and safe talk and text line. Like you idiot. These have been around for years, but I've not okay. experienced it myself. This is in Delaware. I wake up this morning to this breaking news. The Wiener King's hot dog truck. We're all very familiar, obviously, with food trucks. Sure. These brilliant SOBs are now running a 19-foot pontoon boat. That's right, a food pontoon that serves it right from the water. Is this happening in Minnesota? How is it not happening? Why aren't we starting one? Listen to the father and son here. Uh, This is Brian and Tyler talking about their new floating restaurant. We have him on the grill. I'm up front taking orders. And we're just killing it. And it's ankle deep water, and people just walk up and order food. As soon as we got out there, people started coming. Uh, unexpectedly busy. I mean, we ran out of food. We weren't expecting that. I mean, it was crazy. No advertising. We're okay. sitting there yelling, hot dogs. Yeah, okay. So they're walk out. It's a pontoon yeah, boat. But yeah. they, the picture I'm looking at, they're in the middle of the lake, and boats just come up. Yeah. You know, you pull up a side, alongside, you rope in, you get your hot dogs and your brew. They don't actually have a liquor license. I don't know if this is possible in Minnesota, but are we doing this? Why aren't we doing this? That that, that was where I was about to go. I see, I see why you're grumpy now, because this is a brilliant idea, and someone's probably already ahead of us. But maybe not. I've never heard of a mm-hmm. pontoon boat just working the hot dog scene at a lake. Yeah. But I, I correct me if I'm wrong. There's some lakes around here. One or two, I think, <laughs> we last could, We could make this happen. Yeah, we could. Now, listen, think about it. The food truck's wildly popular. Golf yeah. course, you know, the, the Rangers sure. out there, they can't boom. Oh, yeah. They're selling out. Uh, they do one lap around the 19, and they're out. they got to go back for more food. Out on the lake, people constantly, yeah, sure, we pack a cooler sometimes. We usually don't. But you see a... a kick-ass food mm-hmm. pontoon out there selling your favorite food. Oh, yeah, man. This is a moneymaker. And you're right. We're probably not going to do squat about it, and we're going to keep dragging our asses into work in oh, the middle I, of the night to do this for a living. Dude, I'm the, I'm the king of great ideas that I do nothing about. I mean, we all have had those, right, over yeah. the years. Um, I, it's funny because you saw this story, and you came in, you were like, oh, man, I, I, I this is brilliant. Whereas I saw a story this morning that's the exact opposite, and that is – electric like ev electric vehicles right mm-hmm. that's all the rage and that's yeah. a beautiful thing but but ahead of the paris olympic games next year they are about to apparently green light flying taxi cabs like basically <laughs> ev powered like mm. helicopter looking things to bust people around to bust people i should say to get people away and above the traffic in paris and get you from event to event to event that's apparently happening and my first thought is now that's a terrible idea that's the opposite of hot dog pontoon because hot dog pontoon that's a no brainer what could possibly go wrong nothing it's not it, it's waist deep water at the deepest ankle deep knee deep that's good you're selling hot dogs you're making people happy you're living your best summer life flying helicopters over paris <laughs> taxi cab helicopters that yeah. did only go up a couple hundred feet no thank you i'm already nervous about every uber driver for that matter any any legally sanctioned taxi driver i get in the car with you don't know who they are mm-hmm. you don't know that they know how to drive now you want to take me a couple hundred feet off the ground <laughs> oh yeah you're right exactly a little a fender bender is one thing you know but uh, you, there are no fender benders up in the air There's no such thing as a fender bender up there. No, you're in deep trouble. That, and think of what, of course, we all want to get out of traffic. How nice does that sound? If we could just look. That's why rich people do it, because you only can get one or two up there without it. Imagine traffic. Imagine 494 now in the air. No. What a pain in the ass that would be if it was, you had traffic you're living in, and then you look up, and there's nothing but, are these things silent because the buzzing, you ever go to one of these drone parks? 
Now you go to a park for a nice walk, and there's <laughs> yeah. 15 yeah. acne farms out there with their uh, with their remote their drones. No thanks. No thanks. Everywhere. Yeah. No. Good luck, Paris, with um, all that. I'm trying to think because I said earlier I'm the master of great business ideas, and of course none come to mind because I haven't done them. But I did. <laughs> I did. You know, I, I, but I'm, I'm the worst. I will laugh at any great idea. I never see the future coming. Right. I really don't ever see the future coming. But apparently, I can hold that thought. Candace, do we have a phone call right now? Yes, yeah, Jim uh, from Chaska. Food pontoon. I knew it. Good morning. What's up, brother? Good morning, guys. Hey, you're talking about this weenie thing, a hot dog thing. I grew up in northern Illinois and on the chain of lakes, and in a no wake zone, they had this. Weenie pontoon boat, they called it the weenie wagon. And it was the most popular of course. attraction. And you just got in line. Yeah. You pulled up. You gave me your order at the back of the boat, just like a drive through You pulled to the front of the boat. The yeah. guy had the hot dogs on the grill, and you got your Chicago-style hot dog. You oh. The poppy seeds, the mustard, the yeah. nuclear Peppers. green relish, yeah. the tomato <laughs> slices, yeah, and the dough sure. pickle. Uh, no french fries. <laughs> and you get soda. They didn't sell beer. Yeah, they didn't sure. have a liquor license, but you you waited at least fifteen minutes when you got in line every time for that place. Have you witnessed something like this in Minnesota? I have not. Uh, I don't have a boat anymore, so I've not been on any of the lakes in Minnesota. But uh, I could imagine you would make a fortune there. Yeah. Okay. Let's get. Okay. Let's just start assembling the team right here. Mm -hmm. You've seen this in operation. You're you're on the team. Thank you right. for the call. Thanks for jumping in. We got to find someone at a bank. We got to find someone who can run a boat. We got to find a hot dog <laughs> cooker. We just we just need like a half a dozen people, and and we're gonna we're gonna make this thing fly. Yeah, someone with money. You know, <laughs> all we've got is the idea. Can yeah. we? Uh, Candace, can you jump on and trademark this for us real quick or whatever Just we have someone, to do? Someone figure that out, Yeah, you? I don't know. Someone, on, I know, and this is the thing. We'll talk about it. It'll be talked about. But someone out there right now yeah. is going to get home today and bother the hell out of their spouse with something yeah. they heard on the radio. And we're like, giving them the idea, and mm -hmm. then they're going to they're gonna footnote. They'll call, they'll, it'll be like the Zep dog. <laughs> and you'll get not 1% of the profits on the back end. <laughs> the way that's now, nice. having seen Ozark on Netflix, my mind, of course, goes to the nefarious side of things which is with that chicago dog here's a bag of meth or, or something you know or, oh, here's here's some poppy plants you know yeah. but but okay let's just keep it on the up and up i'm sorry I, you know you binge watch a show about drug runners in the ozarks and next thing you know your pontoon boat's got a lot more than chicago dogs <laughs> right you're getting ahead of the curve you're up that's where it will definitely it will eventually get there but let's keep it innocent you're and, right you're right and pure for First the few moment years true yeah. just hot dog lake food this is yeah. going to be great well I was I was mentioning yeah. earlier I was a uh, I was a I was a broadcasting student at Western Kentucky University in the eighties and there was a kid that I had a class with and he told everybody if you'd asked him and if you didn't ask him he had an idea <laughs> for a cable channel he said I'm going to start a channel one day that's just going to be weather <laughs> so two four seven he goes and we would go oh the weather channel he goes yeah I mean I think because ultimately if you think about it and he would lay out this whole plan for something that he called the weather channel yeah. and we laughed and we oh God did we laugh oh it hurt my stomach to laugh so much of this idiot now I I would love to put a button on the story and say he did start the weather channel I don't know he may have yeah but the fact is that idea clearly was gold clearly. and this guy right here clearly was an idiot to think you got to be nuts I'm the same guy in 1979 who went what do you mean there's a 24-hour sports cable channel that doesn't make sense you can't have 24 hours of sports information no one wants oh that God, espn i'm reading about it going this is the dumbest and i'm a sports fanatic and i thought it made no sense right i never see the future coming ever oh, I, I, i'll match you 1996 there at the big desktop computer in the house i think we're it was prodigy at the time and there were maybe five websites mm -hmm. and my buddy and i had heard about a website where you could download posters and we were downloading the iconic Farrah Fawcett red swimsuit oh, poster sure. yeah it took about 45 minutes to download we'd be ex <laughs> we, we'd <laughs> yeah, keep right, running right. from the television back into the computer room going I can see her collarbone it's almost there oh, it, was, uh, it was it was such a fiasco back then and we sitting there stoned out of our gourds had the idea hey you know what? Uh, there's a website here where we can buy our own uh, website. Five bucks, whatever you want. And we started talking, and he said, well, what about Burger King? I said, I know. We should buy, like, Mercedes.com. And we laughed and laughed. Like, what? <laughs> 
are they, what are they going to do? Sell cars on the internet? Are they going to? Yeah, right. right. Are you going to be able to? Why would Burger King, a fast food uh, chain, ever want a website? And we allowed they would just be folly to throw away our money, of which we had none at the time. Of and, course, and still don't because uh, we're dumbasses because like that. If we had it. just bought like ten of them, yeah. I'd be cashed out. I'd be on an. I, I, you know what? I'd be. I'd be crawling into a ring with uh, Zuckerberg yeah, in about here, a month yeah. or so. True true story. Quote from Steve Gorman. Amazon.com. What do you mean they sell books through the ma- <laughs> Why do I want a book to come yeah. to my house? Who? I love bookstores. I, I don't want to not go to the bookstore. No one's going to order books <laughs> online. Why does everyone want stuff delivered to their house? I never see it coming. Yeah, that's why we're... Still working in broadcast radio. Well, what was your big idea? Let's uh, pull everyone into our little bit of glorious misery this morning. What was your idea that you had that didn't make it or you think should make it or, I don't know, uh, share with us on the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and text line 651-989-ROCK. I know you have one. Or on the uh, KQ Facebook page. With that, it's time for the Mike Evans Hollywood Report. Good morning, Mike. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had a great weekend. We start off with a little, uh, some love nuggets. Just a little odd, but I love it. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire have had a long, long time bromance. Okay. They, they hang out together. They go to sporting events together. They vacation together. Sure. They double date together. That's nice. Uh, they are currently <laughs> in Europe together. And I also pointed out because Tobey Maguire, Leonardo DiCaprio, two of the nicest guys in Hollywood. Really? Yeah, good guys. I didn't know that. Just like Taylor Swift, Kelly Clarkson is taking her dirty laundry divorce public uh, in at least one song on her new album, Chemistry. She rips her ex-husband, Brandon Blackstock, and she plans a single about him. And Kelly also planning to write a tell-all book. Boy, taking a page out of... uh, of Taylor Swift's book of going after those ex-husbands and ex-boyfriends. I mean, I, I don't know anything about this Brandon Blackstock. I've literally never heard his name until today, but he just sounds like a bad guy. He is a bad guy. <laughs> he lived what up in of, Montana, and a friend of mine in Montana he told me some horrible stories what about What kind of name Blackstock. is Brandon Blackstock? It's like, yeah, a, it's like a Marvel comic bad guy. That does exactly. sound like a villain, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I absolutely love this story, Steve. So Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence says she never wanted any of her fellow actors that she had love scenes with to get any ideas. Right. So so she always ate garlic and tuna fish sandwiches just before all oh, kissing that's scenes. Nice. That a girl. <laughs> that a girl. There Whoa. you go. Mick Jagger, 79, uh, and ballet dancer Melanie Hammock, who is 36, uh, they're celebrating 10 years together. And it was the same year, same month, 10 years ago, that Jagger also became a great grandfather. Hey, well, listen, you know, we, we don't know what it's like to be Mick Jagger for, for even a minute. You can't imagine being in his shoes for a minute. Just think about being Mick Jagger for life. The guy's got a, he's just got a whole different set of standards. And he's used all the runway. That's uh, for sure. No quite. I mean, God bless him. One life to live, and he is getting all of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Illyria, Illyria Baldwin is 26 years younger than her husband, Alec Baldwin. But yeah. she says Alec insists on calling her mommy. Well, mommy. Okay, okay. Hey, Mike, seriously. It's Monday morning. Uh, <laughs> I need I need like a I need some Pepto after hearing that. Oh, sorry, I know, I know. Yeah. I told you that Jennifer Lawrence movie just wasn't that good. No hard feelings. It made fifteen million dollars at the box office. Mm-hmm. Uh, consider this: Jennifer Lawrence's salary was seventeen point five million. Uh, they'll get there. They'll yeah, get there eventually. Eventually, the movie Back in Action uh, stars Cameron Diaz and Jamie Foxx. The film only had five more days of reverses and minor shooting uh, when Jamie disappeared with a mystery illness. Okay. Cameron Diaz says she's tried to reach Jamie but hasn't been able to, and she is completely in the dark. What's happening with the movie? Just I, I, I didn't even realize she was uh, making. I thought she was done. No, nope, this was the big comeback with- movie, huh? I guess. Oof. So Meghan Markle be- uh, begged Taylor Swift. Meghan Markle begged Taylor Swift to make a brief appearance on her podcast. And Taylor Swift politely declined. Right. The word is that Taylor laughed at the offer and said, she got to be serious. She, you, you kidding me? Yeah, uh, no way Taylor Swift goes. Uh, Taylor Swift you, does her own thing. You can say what you want about Taylor. She smells it coming a mile away. She knows exactly what's up. She knows who's who, and she is 
all about getting uh, Taylor's way. And, yeah, she, she looked at Meghan Markle like, please. Not with men so much, though. No, that's all part of it, too. <laughs> no, she you, knows you exactly know what, what she's doing. You're right. That's you're right. Hey, I got to give a shout out to, I, I would get so many emails from our listener, but I get a really nice email from a Randy Gordon who loves the show, listens every day. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to him. He's emailed me several times. I want to say hello. And something different. Be, stay with me on this, Steve. I'm here. Every Monday, I'm going to end with a joke. Oh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Here is my first Monday morning joke. How do you make an 80-year-old woman yell the F word? Oh, boy. You uh, get another 80-year-old woman to yell, bingo! Wow! <laughs> Hello? Evans coming off the top rope. I'm out of here, Mike Evans. Man. Yeah, right on. Oh, something to look forward to now on Monday. <laughs> He's, that's Apex. I don't know if he can top that one next week. We'll have to see what happens. All right. uh, we were discussing all the brilliant ideas we've had that we never followed through with. Or, or maybe you had a great idea that just didn't pan out for some reason or another. On the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. I believe we have a caller, Candace. Who is that be? Kurt from Minnesota City. Kurt, good morning. Kurt, are you with us? He's thinking about a cell phone reception uh, antenna that you can use to get better. Oh, Kurt. What did you say, Lake City? Oh, well. yeah, that might be on the edge. Man, that was tough. I man, waited all that time, which we do appreciate. Yeah. Have we got somebody else, Candace? Doctor. Hey, are you there? Oh, Kurt. <laughs> is Hello? this? Yeah. Kurt. I'm here. Is everybody on? All right. Hang on a second. Kurt, we got you. What's on your mind, brother? Well, about 20 years ago, you know how boats fit in the garage, but you can never get the door closed because the damn trailer is sticking out? <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. Well, about 20 years ago, I thought, how how can I get this to work? So I thought, of, well, maybe a collapsible hitch or some sort or a smaller so it would slide in and, you know, you could extend it out to work. Well, about two years after I thought of that idea, I saw every boat trailer out there has got a uh, collapsible oh, hitch now. Oh, sure. yeah. But you didn't mention it to a, someone at a bar, did you, when you'd had a couple of beers and they ran uh, with it? That's <laughs> possible. Yeah. Man, oh, I thought you were going to say, I thought of, uh, you, you came up with a garage door that had a little hole in it or something. <laughs> like, so, you know, that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's what I would have come up with, yeah. something right. completely you know, impractical. Doesn't matter how big the boat is, you can always get the boat to fit in the garage. It's that damn trailer hitch that's yep, yep. All right. Well, ne hey, j next time you get a brilliant idea, man, keep it to yourself and uh, yeah. get and, and get busy. Thank you for the call, hey, Kurt. We appreciate it. it. Thank you. That's why you see so many boats sitting outside the garage, yeah. right there along the side of the garage. Right? That's exactly right, Candace. Who else have we got today on the phone? Doctor Bill from Shatek, Wisconsin. Oh. <laughs> Doctor Bill, good morning, sir. <laughs> Every day. Oh, well, that, that means the world to us. Thank you, sir. What's on your mind today? Well, back in the 80s when my knees used to work the way they were supposed to, I used to play uh, <laughs> men's hockey at night uh, all year round. In the summertime, we'd sit out in the parking lot and have a beer or two after the game. And yeah. One of, our, one of our friends named Scotty had this really, really dumb idea that he wanted all of us to throw some money into and invest. He wanted to, he wanted to take a hockey skate boot and put wheels on the bottom and call them rollerblades. And we told them oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, It'll never work. We didn't invest. Yeah. <laughs> No, he isn't. Now they were made here in Minnesota, or, uh, or invented here in Minnesota. Was that the guy? Yeah, Scotty Olson. Oh, oh yeah, Scott Olson. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, Bill, you're breaking my yeah. heart. You probably don't see him much anymore, do you? You probably can't get into those neighborhoods. No, 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 neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh man, that's a tough one. But. um yeah. You know, hey, you, 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 you probably did okay for yourself. I mean, I'm assuming if you are a doctor and, and, and you had a good run on the on the ice yourself, you're okay. I'm doing fine. Great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we appreciate the uh, you, you checking us out every morning, yeah. and uh, thank you for the call, sir. Yeah, to tech. I, uh, that's a great area up there. I have some friends that have a place up there. Been really? known to crash the area. Oh, yeah, you'll find some Minnesotans going over there, that area. Man, all right. Well, this is this is great. Yeah, if you've got a if you got one of those great ideas, or if you like Dr. Bill, 
uh, decided not to get involved with a great idea, we'd love to hear about it. 651-989-ROCK, the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line. 92KQRS is giving you a shot to win free gas for a year. Listen weekdays at 9, 2, and 5 for your keyword to text to win $92.50 in free gas, plus tickets to an upcoming show at the Medina Entertainment Center, and you will be entered in the competition for free gas for a year. Now, this is sponsored by Body Gastroenterology and Quick Trip 9, 2, and 5. Get that keyword. All right. I'm on the KQ Facebook page. I'm just logging on now. What's your big idea that wasn't? Something you thought was a really good idea but wasn't, or maybe it was and someone beat you to it. Or maybe you're just sitting on one and you need to rally some support for it. Give us a call here, 651-989-ROCK. That's the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line. Or get on the KQ Facebook page and please hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, June the 26th. And I am as surprised as you are that we're making plans for new businesses here on the KQ Morning Show. <laughs> Apparently, we're all in on a pontoon boat to sell hot dogs to people out on the lakes this summer. There's a story from Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. Somebody had the brilliant idea. Let's just sell uh, hot dogs from a pontoon. Yeah. And now we're all excited about this genius idea. There's probably someone already doing it, and we're just unaware of it. But in the meantime, it just sparked a whole conversation about all these great ideas I had that I never did anything about, or the fact that I never see good ideas coming. They drop into my lap, and I'm completely oblivious no. to the future at times. Uh, and we've already had a few calls in Candace. I believe we have somebody else on the Maple Grove, a lock and safe talk and text line, who has got something on their mind. Tracy from Lindstrom. Ter Teresi, good morning. Good morning. What's going on over there in Lindstrom? I'm on my way to work right now. Okay. <laughs> I was just calling in to share. When I was in middle school, I had a invention portfolio, and I thought I knew all sorts of stuff, but okay. apparently. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so my family used to hike a lot and go backpacking, so I invented a helium backpack for my backpack. <laughs> but uh, the main thing is when I was in middle school, I learned about magnets and everything like that. So I invented a magnet train that would slingshot a magnet and make the train work in, um, like, sustainability and all that okay. business. And then I found out, like, years later that already existed in Japan, but I had no idea. So I was like, oh, man, they stole my invention, but it actually came out in the 60s. Oh, uh, well, I mean, but you came up with it all on your own. Tracy, tell me you're doing something to uh, you know, make the planet better, make us better. What are you up to these days? Because, I mean, that's very innovative to have an invention portfolio as a child. Right. Well, now I'm actually going to school for transportation, and I'm a tra transportation specialist. Wow. All right, all right. Make Fair it better. Are you, now, what about the drones that uh, they they want drone taxis in the air? So the thing is, we're all going to be flying around in these drone taxis. They're doing it in Paris next year for the Olympics. What do you think of that as a transportation specialist? Um, sounds interesting, but I'm not sure. I like the per se air pollution of all looking up and seeing all these. Mm -hmm flying all mm -hmm. over the place. I kind of like the open sky. Right but, there with you. Well, yeah. we'll see what the world holds. <laughs> well, Tracy, I'm I'm still waiting for the day that we wake up and recognize that high speed trains are the future. So you get on that, okay? Mm -hmm. Get us some trains in this country. <laughs> Come on. And forget the drones. You know what you need? A helium backpack. Let's just get yeah. that's how you get up and over. Helium backpacks <laughs> and bullet trains for everybody. <laughs> Tracy, you run for office on that platform and you got my vote. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Day. See you. Thanks for the call. Man, Bye. What's uh, the helium backpack is really actually that, kind of what, what's that, happening with that? I don't know. That. <laughs> I, I meant to ask. What, what's I the point? I, it would, you know, she was. They would go out on hikes all the time. You know, so that, that it would make you even if it doesn't lift you up out of the air, it makes you a little lighter instead of hauling around oh, my. Oh, I see. Yeah, st okay. yeah. Instead of hauling around my three hundred ten pounds, I roughly. Maybe, I thought maybe yeah. if you you know sucked in some helium and had that weird voice, <laughs> then it scared bears off or something. Well, maybe there's something I didn't know. There's a two and one. That's an added benefit right there. But yeah, I think it would just make you a little lighter on the on the feet, right? I, I would. I, that, that's a that's exactly what it is. Well, well done. Way to connect those dots up. Candace, do we have another caller? <laughs> yeah, John from Brooklyn Park. John from Brooklyn Park. Good morning, sir. Good morning. 
Let's go. What do you got on your mind today? Well, this is about a years ago. My mom made us waffles for breakfast one day. My dad was at work, and she had extra batter, so she decided she'd just keep making waffles. But my dad got home from work, and she had stacks of waffles on the kitchen counter. And my dad said, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> he said, "Well, I'm going to freeze. I'm going to freeze these." And put them in the toaster later that are really hard. And she got mad at him and she threw everything in the garbage. And about four years later, that good old slogan, Lego Mike. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just had some frozen waffles over the weekend. It's a go to for me. Your mom was ahead of her time. Your dad just laughing all the way to the. That's how innovation is killed right there, John. You got that right. <laughs> but I didn't. I could hear you guys, but I couldn't hear Tracy. What did she have? Tracy had the uh, helium backpack. She would hike a lot as a kid, so she had a helium backpack, all right, that would just make you a little lighter on your feet, keep the keep the hiking going. And then the other was a bullet train uh, that was fed by magnets or generated by magnets, but she didn't realize that uh, Japanese had come up with that in the 1960s. Oh. Yeah. 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 So, um, so we've already had we've had we've had high speed trains and uh, and 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 egos already this morning mm -hmm. uh, on the shelf. That's a uh, we're off to a very strong start. Hey, John, thank you for the call, brother. We appreciate it. I like that. You're welcome, man. That's like you said, innovation just squashed just like that. Right. With uh, with just no one a, wants to heat up a frozen waffle. What's the matter with you? We mock that which we do not understand. I know we have another caller here. Listen to Lance real quick on the KQ Facebook page's idea. Roughly ten years. Uh, go, uh, roughly 10 years old, going to the gas station with my parents, they'd send me in there with gas cards to pay for gas. Mm -hmm. I must have said multiple times, they should have someone stand here to take this so I don't have to go in or just take a picture and send it in. Roughly 15 years later, paying at the pump. Oh, paying at the pump, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Lance missed out right there. Mm -hmm. That idea, even if you got a quarter of a penny for every transaction, you know what I mean? Just right. doesn't take much. Nope, not much at all. Just a tiny piece of the back end would have all been different. Candace, who else do we have on the uh, horn right now? John from Harris. John, good morning. Morning. What's yeah, happening over there in Harris, brother? Oh, not much. Finally got a little rain. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Very nice. What's on your mind today? Uh, me and my cousin sat around and he came up with, you know, I bet we could sell bottled water. And that was in 1974. Right? Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, you'd get laughed at back then for that, wouldn't Nobody you? knew we were all going to get so thirsty back then. I know. We had the plan and everything, and our folks told us it was dumb. So I guess that was the Swedian family fortune gone. <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, what was the plan? Were you just going to take it right out of the tap, or did you have a filtering system in mind? What was going to be this, the special sauce? Oh, yeah, we were just going to fill it up at home and <laughs> there you go. go to the store and sell it. Man, you know what? Honestly, it would have been a, a gold mine. Mm -hmm. Josh says well, when... Used, oh, I'm sorry. I know. I, I used to collect bottles, you know. Yeah, right, of course. For, just fill them up money. with water and sell them back. Yeah, definitely. John, thank you for the call, man. We appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that one with the bottled water. It was lunacy right until, you know, we were all doing it. Yeah. Who's going to pay for water? You know, five minutes later, I was paying for water. Yeah. Yeah, that that one still makes my dad mad to this day. Pay, well, he doesn't even want to pay for anything that anyone bottles. Well, we can, your grandmother knows how to make root beer. Um, all right, Dad. Yeah, there was, there was a moment when we weren't that thirsty, and then suddenly we were all completely thirsty and needed <laughs> maximum hydration at all times. Right. A lot of great ideas out there. Get a lot of family squashing ideas is the theme yeah. so far today. Candace, do we have another caller? She's on it right oh, now. she's on it right Here, now. Here's I Josh apologize. right here. Josh on the KQ Facebook page. Well, when PB uh, M&Ms came out, I thought they need this, but Carmel and Bada Bing, they came out with Carmel. Just, you know, behind the curve there a little oh, bit on that man. one. That's a tough one. Yeah, Eric had an idea for a graphic novel. Then a movie came out with essentially the exact same plot. Mm -hmm. It was kind of mad, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it wasn't much more than some ideas on paper. Yeah, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah when, you, when you think about a movie idea or something, that show idea, and then sure. next year, boom, there it is. There it is. We, um, You know, uh, the remember the kids in the hall? Yeah. Great, great sketch comedy from Canada. Uh, my former band, the Black Crows, we were buddies with those guys. We hung out with them a lot in the 90s. And uh, one of the guys that worked for my band, my cousin, 
Jeffrey used to do this thing where he would say we'd be I don't even remember the context. It was just, a, you know, you have all these uh, internal humor jokes, just nothing. No one outside that tour bus would ever think it was funny, but you come up with your own in-house shtick. And he would look at people on a regular basis and say, you drunk, go to bed. That was just a thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember where it came from. But uh, we were hanging out with the kids, and then that was getting thrown around. And then it ended up in one of their sketches. There was a character on the phone who would go, you drunk, go to bed. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey was like, they stole my line. I was like, dude, that's the greatest compliment you could ever be given. They didn't steal anything. Yeah, right. You said it around a bunch of comedians. <laughs> they write sketch comedy for a living. If right. you don't want anyone to use your shtick, keep it to yourself. Right. It was really good. Candace, do we have, uh, I think there's another phone. Yeah, Todd from Becker. Todd, good morning. Hey, good morning. How are you guys doing today? We're great, brother. Mm -hmm. What do you got? What do you got for us? 1985. I was teaching first aid in uh, Miami of Ohio, and I was in grad school, and uh, we we're doing a chapter on poisoning and poison prevention. Uh -huh. And I threw out the idea, you know. Somebody ought to invent something to keep little kids from getting into cabinets and getting into drawers <laughs> where the knives are. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. And sure enough, one of my students was a uh, entrepreneurial studies guy. He took the idea. He ran with it. He was a millionaire before he graduated. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> oh. Seriously. The, the baby, the, the kid lock shelves and drawers and all that stuff was a guy at Miami of Ohio. Yeah, the slidey little things you put on a doorknob. Yeah. He started the whole craze. Did you ever get a... Other people did wow. knockoffs and stuff, but... I mean, did you get a thank you card or... Do it. <laughs> I wish I had a... I wish I had a quarter of a penny for everyone. Man, oh, the man. 80s... The 80s were like... The, that's where everyone realized, like, oh, uh, we, we we have kids, like baby on board and, and, mm -hmm. and, and child protection. Yeah, yeah. As a child of the 70s, I'm like, eh, no, it was just, hey, don't drink the Drano, kid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very different experience. Todd, th hey, Todd, by the way, uh, I yeah. went. I was at Miami of Ohio a few years ago. My my took my kid up there to take a look at the campus, and after a while, oh, he's yeah. like, and he said, "I feel like you really want me to go here." I said, "I don't care what you do. I want to go here. <laughs> it was beautiful, yeah. man. What a gorgeous oh. place that was." All right, Todd. Thanks for the call, brother. Beautiful women. And you Thank have a good one, man. Uh, Miami of Ohio. If I'm not mistaken, Ben Roethlisberger, yes. Big Ben. Big Ben went to Miami of Ohio, That's number right. one pick. Uh, that panned out for him. A couple of Super Bowl rings okay. for the Steelers. He did, did all right. okay. And then they had that one basketball player, Wally Zerbiak, back in the day. Oh, Led yeah. the nation in scoring. Remember that? That's right. I didn't know he went to Miami of Ohio. I, be I believe that is the case. All right. We do have some new ideas on the table. Think before you scoff and mock. Mm -hmm. John Ward has come up with. Combining the forces of Ziploc and cereal bags. You know those cereal bags? They got to stuff them down why? in there. It gets a little stale. Yeah. Why How about is we, this so difficult? Why don't we Ziploc those bad boys? Oh, who's, uh, who's working? General Mills? Are you up over there this morning? That would, that would make so much sense. All right. If I were still eating cereal in the morning, I would be very mm -hmm. excited at the concept. All right, and I'm amazed it never occurred to me. All right. What about this one? Brian says a train ferry. You know, cars have their own ferries. They have a boat. Why no train ferry? Why can't you put my car on a train, taxi to Alaska, drive it around to California? So not trains on ferries, but why not, you know, be able to uh, transport oh, your gotcha. car on a train to mm -hmm. somewhere? If you want to, you know what, uh, you don't want to rent a vehicle, you know. You're flying well, up I, to Alaska. I, you're going to meet your car up there because they're going to take a train up there. He said well, they, there are there are trucks that do that. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. you can have your car shipped to the West Coast or to Alaska on the back of a semi. I bet it costs a lot, even it on does. a train too. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, just I think be that a was lot probably, of dough. Yeah. Right. Cost prohibitive, I believe, is what a businessman would say that is. Yep. Oh, back in the eighties, Robin wanted someone to uh, anyone, just a willing random stranger, wanted to pay them to drive around to different restaurants and bring food to her door. <laughs> yeah, wow. imagine that. Radical yeah. idea back in the 80s. Why can't I just pay someone to go to a restaurant, get some food, and bring it back to me? Really, really, really well ahead of the curve. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. No, I'm, 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 I'm hopeless. All I'm right. never going to see him coming. All right, I'm getting mired. I'm getting stuck in this. We have to move on. Keep them coming on the KQ Facebook page. Uh, great ideas that never were or maybe could be someday or just was a bad idea if you tried it. 
and on the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line 651-989 Rock. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Monday, June the 26th. Oh, the good ideas we've had throughout our lives. The ones we have failed to follow through on, the ideas we thought were great that turned out not to be, it's a whole thing. If you look back, sometimes you uh, you just feel like you just spent years of your life just stubbing your toe. <laughs> you know, it's kind of just that's what the collective feeling you get. Like, I really should have done that or I really mm-hmm. shouldn't have done that. Uh, I had a buddy in Atlanta in the mid 90s, early 90s, who came to me and asked me if I had any extra money, wanted to invest. He was going to open an all night 247 basketball gym uh, in downtown Atlanta. And I thought he was absolutely insane. I was like, who's playing basketball at 3 a.m.? Turns out a lot of people, a lot of cops, a lot of yeah. off-duty officers, they finish that shift at 3-4. They want to go get in a workout, play some hoops. And then I said, well, if you have a gym that's open all night, there's going to be a lot of, you're going to attract some unsavory characters. Again, cops in there. Cops got to work out for free. <laughs> he didn't tell me that part. By the way, every cop in the city can come and work out for free forever. Oh, Never wow. cry. Nothing. The place just printed money for oh, years. Oh, man. Yeah, it's what I get for not paying attention and- I- in school, in life, in business. Oh, a couple of them. I remember Dad, he still grumbles about this one because uh, the 4th of July weekend's coming up and I'll be back at home on the farm and this will come up after a few beers. It will be, but we were all out there, you know, it's one of these family get-togethers and the kids are outside playing in the backyard with balls and it's dark out and Dad's like, i to make a glow-in-the-dark ball. <laughs> no, a ball that glows in the dark. Maybe yeah. a golf ball. You do that. People golf at night. We're like, yeah, Dad, you're drunk. Have another beer. No, no one will play, ever do it. No one's playing golf with glow in the dark balls. Are you out of your mind? And uh, yeah, anyway, we now have kids in the backyard playing with glow in the dark balls, which just rubs, you know, salt into the wound uh, for them. Yeah. And then another buddy of mine, I remember him telling me that a friend of his came around. He said, yeah, his parents were in the grocery store business, small little grocery stores in South Dakota, not much for money makers. Uh, but he had an idea that people could pay um, with their card, with a swipe of their card. You didn't mm-hmm. have to punch everything in and came up with these little card readers. Oh, that, man. Yeah, and he wanted him, to my, my friend in college, to buy into it. And he's like, yeah, that's stupid, dude. And I don't have much money as it is. And I don't want to put it in your silly card reading venture. We don't know what happened to him because he lives on an island, on an island, yeah. with, on a castle somewhere. That's how that works. Yeah, he made hundreds of millions of dollars. And my buddy... Uh, to rub a little salt into that wound, ended up becoming the guy that would go around and try to get your store to sign up. And he ended up selling these things for, Mm. you know, probably $35,000 a year. (laughs) Yeah, right. Um, I was in uh, broadcasting school. Well, I was I was in college, a major in broadcasting, I should say, in the 80s. And a kid in one of my classes, uh, a kid there in the broadcasting school at Western Kentucky, told everybody that would ever listen, he was going to start a cable channel about weather. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's going to be called the Weather Channel, and yeah. we all thought that was so funny. Uh, what? Well, who's going to care about the weather for 24 hours a day? Turns out a lot of people. It still seems silly, but there it is, yeah. and I find myself watching it a lot, too. Like, why am I watching the weather? Oh, my God, look what's going, happening in Kansas. Hey, man, who would have ever thought Suzanne Summers could sell purses on <laughs> HGT or whatever, QVC and jewelry and stuff for 40 straight years? Candace, do we have another caller on the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line? Jim from Bloomer, Wisconsin. Jim, good morning. Good morning. What's happening over hey, there, man? What do you got for us today? Well, well I want to let you know that I enjoy tuning into you guys when I, uh, when I come through town. <laughs> So it's uh, always a treat. But uh, 1979, I was living briefly in Colorado, uh, worked out there for a summer, and met some people. We'd hang around, uh, you know, drink a pitch in for a buck fifty bottle of wine, you mm-hmm. know, and to try to make it uh, go a little farther. The one guy said, "Yeah, you know, if you uh, add some Seven Up to it to give it a little bubbly and uh, maybe a little lime and lemon in there, it makes a pretty refreshing drink, you know." And, I think it was uh, Bartles and James was the first one to come out with a yeah. wine cooler in about 1981. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had the first one a couple of years before it ever uh, come out to the market. You know, just didn't know we had a gold mine in our hands. Oh, oh. man. Bartles and James cashed in big, too. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, they, I'm sorry, sorry you didn't see the, uh, sorry you didn't see that route yourself, man. But we appreciate yeah. you listening when you're coming through. Absolutely. All right. Enjoy, enjoy your day. 
Cheers. I uh, I remember talking to my kids once about wine coolers. It's like, you know, this thing in the mid '80s. All of a sudden, everybody I knew was drinking wine coolers. Right. And then I pulled up a Bartles and James TV ad and showed them on YouTube. Just two old guys on the porch, <laughs> and they were like, "You you used to think those were funny commercial?" I'm like, "Hilarious. Those yeah. were. It was all the rage." And then that led to a you know, "Where's the beef?" Wendy's ad. <laughs> Just show your kids things from the '80s, and they look at you like you are from planet. You got to be kidding! I me. know, and then and then how that whole bottle the wine cooler thing turned into a thing. Of course, it's seltzers now. Yeah. But if you were going to going to get together and drink, suddenly it wasn't beer anymore. What kind of wine coolers do the ladies want? Oh, every couple know. every yeah. couple of years, somebody's like, "I think people are tired of beer," and mm-hmm. then they run something up the flagpole, and everybody gets on it for a minute, and then mm-hmm. it's like, "No, nah, beer's pretty good." Yeah, beer's pretty good. Beer endures. Kimberly yeah. had an idea way back when. On our KQ Facebook page to open up a coffee shop, you know, someplace where you could just buy coffee in an opportunistic <laughs> spot, maybe a kiosk or something sure. that people could just pull into yeah. very quickly and and just grab some just coffee. Need, just need to pick me up. In Why the would you do that when you got the percolator at home? For crying out loud, we have a thermos, you know, with a cup already that screwed on the top. Why yeah. would someone want to buy coffee I, on the go? In like 1988, I met a woman in Atlanta who had just moved there from San Francisco, and she said, "I can't find a good cup of coffee anywhere." And I was like. Good, good cup of coffee. What are you talking about? She's like, well, in San Francisco, you got coffee shops. And I was like, yeah, well, do you have good fried chicken there? I mean, what? <laughs> da, well, like, who cares? And then, of course, yeah. you know, there was one place in Atlanta back then that had like, you know, ca- that you could get like a coffee, a, a latte, cappuccino. And I was like, what are you, what are you people crazy? Oh. Again, never see it coming. I am blind as a bat to what's oh. obviously staring the rest of the world right in the face. Uh, uh, you know, there's just there's just opportunities all, all all over the place, and I I mean I man in 1992 I think it was I sat at a bar in a booth with a guy who looked me dead in the eye and said, "There's a company called America Online. It's AOL. <laughs> it's going to be everywhere within a year or two. Everybody you know is going to have email." I'm like, "Okay, stop. What's email?" He explains what email is. And then he says, "You're going to get a. You'll have a. You'll have a computer in your home, a laptop, and you'll plug your phone modem into it. Uh, your phone cord into the modem, and then you'll log in." He explained. Not the distant future. He explained the very near future. He explained a world that within three years was everywhere. Yeah. And he said to me, if you have any extra money laying around, get to like a brokerage and get and, and just invest a few thousand dollars in a thing called AOL. And I looked at him and was like, you are out of your mind. <laughs> and in fact, I, I can hear this. It reverberates in my brain. I was like, okay, let me get this straight. I'm going to have a computer in my home oh. and I'll send mail, but not real mail. It'll be email and it'll be on my computer and everyone will check emails at home and <laughs> i was i thought man you are talking like so far out of your ass and every <laughs> single thing he said came true within a within less than three years right now try, and, yeah yeah and i'm sitting there going boy i really should have Son of a- probably listened and when aol bought time warner like in 1998 or whenever that huge merger was in mm-hmm. the new york times there there was an article and it said flat out ten thousand dollars in 1992 at that moment six years later it was worth six million dollars <laughs> oh. and i was like boy in 1992 i had ten thousand dollars too oh. i was just sitting there like what should i do with this money i'll just put it in a bank I'll just put it somewhere safe. Yeah, where it'll make you know half a percent interest over yeah. twenty years. We've been so close so many times to never having to work for the rest of our lives, but that's the oh, difference sure. between you know people that sit around and think about it and bitch about it on morning radio and people that get up and do it. How about if you had a great idea, you concocted, put it together, but you didn't patent it? Listen to this from John. I was working part-time as a cashier at Target back in the late 80s when the cashier bagged all the customer purchases, drew up a design for a cashier counter so that you weren't bending over all the time to get bags from the shelves beneath the counter. Mm -hmm. Instead, having a drop-off on the counter where the bags were already set, you could drop the merchandise, put on a little turnstile, and the next bag would come around. Made the huge mistake of not patenting it myself, submitted it as a process improvement to Target, now a variation of my design is in every store, not just Target. Wow. A lot of cry emojis on that one, John. I'm crying with you, brother. I remember the story of a guy in, uh, in I think it would have been in the 90s, a Delta Airlines employee just submitted uh, the report who said, 
basically, if we went away from real flatware and real silverware and real glassware and replaced it with you know plastic stuff, the cumulative weight that we would save on it, you know, they measure uh, fuel efficiency. It depends on how much weight is on the plane. Yeah. And like just literally by every flight over the course of a year, he was able to say like this is six million fewer pounds a year we're transporting. Right. And you'll save X amount of fuel. And it all turned out to be true. And the way the airline operated, I believe it was Delta. Could be wrong. And I, of course, I could have dreamed this, but no, I'm pretty sure this is real. Uh, whoever that was that that submitted this whole thing, he got a percentage of the money that they say. Like they oh. gave him a cut. Like, oh, you've saved the airline thirty one million dollars. Yeah. Here's here's two percent of that. Whatever Ooh. it was, it was not a small amount of money. Right. I'm looking around the station right now, and I'm like, that's okay. We don't need that chair. Yeah. Yeah. We what? don't need I, that TV. I've never even turned it yeah. on. Maybe we can get rid of that. I I, I just don't see that I'm going to save that much money yeah. though. What exactly does Zep do around here anyway? <laughs> yeah, can we get a can we get someone? I need a breakdown on uh, the efficacy of a Brian Zep. Is that a word that applies? Eek. Moving along to the next topic this morning, Steve. Uh, we'll keep those coming on the KQ Facebook page. We love them. You can call them in on the Maple Grove Lock and Save Talk and Text Line. We'll jump in and out of this all morning. Maybe we'll just switch the topic to uh, making some easy money here at 8 o'clock. There's a... An island, a set of islands will, will pay you nearly a hundred thousand dollars to move there. There was a story about the uh, dog sitter for a hundred. Oh, that was sure. a six-figure. I, I don't know if that one's still out there or not. Mm-hmm. Or how about you know ten thousand steps a day if you have one of the Fitbits or the Apple Watch or something they track. They say ten thousand. How about getting paid ten thousand dollars for ten thousand steps a day? Easy money. We're talking about that here at eight o'clock. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, ninety-two KQRS. Zip, Tony. Candace and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, June the 26th. Good morning. Who, baby. What a day already. So many great ideas, so little time. And, well, so much so little effort really put behind some of the great ideas <laughs> we've had. Uh, there's a there's a, a pontoon boat out there that sells hot dogs to people in knee deep water. Uh, mm-hmm. It's in it's in Delaware, but boy, we really want to bring some of those hot mm-hmm. dogs selling pontoon boats here to Minnesota. Lake life would be a whole lot better if I could wade out into the water and come back with a chili dog. Yeah, I just think out on the water too, where yeah. the boaters out there, you sure. know, we're tooling around. You always say you're going to pack up some grub and and a few beers to take out in the water with you, but you get out there and, well, you have the few beers, but where's the grub? I'm just saying, that would just be a killer, I think. Yeah, it's, I mean, a turkey and Swiss, sure, but a hot hot dog, fresh oh. off the grill? Come on. I don't know. My friend Shelby this weekend made us some really bomb boat sandwiches, and uh, oh, yeah? I was really um, into them. Wait, so you were on a boat this weekend or just had boat sandwiches? I went sandwiches? on a boat okay. twice this weekend. Really? Yeah. And we're just now hearing about it. I went on a boat Friday night with my friend Shelby and her family. Uh-huh. And then I went on a boat on Saturday with some amazing KQ listeners, Patsy and Brian. Nice. Said, so. Now, I yes. know I know those boat sandwiches, like you I'm sure they were great, but seriously, yeah. would, wouldn't a dog been nicer, though, like a... Even just simple mustard and onions on a nice, hot, fresh grilled <laughs> yeah. hot dog. The Fine. pontoon boat delivering hot dogs in the water. It reminds me of the first time I was at a casino and they had a blackjack uh, tape of a blackjack table in the pool. You could swim up to the bar and then you could swim over and play blackjack all while in the water. <laughs> and I thought, wait, you're just going to hand me greyhounds and poker chips in the pool? Mm-hmm. I, I never need to go anywhere. That's it. It's pretty gorgeous. Brilliant. A lot of of great ideas out there. And your food pontoons, your pontoon boats out there, like your food trucks, it just didn't have to be, I mean, think pizzas, think uh, uh, lobster rolls, think all sorts of delicious things that you could, there'll be a whole row of them out there, you know, they'll be tooling around all over the place. I'll have the Chateaubriand for two and a nice bottle of Malbec. Why not? Um, Why not exactly? Candice, do we have someone on the... Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line. Yes, Marty from Plymouth. Marty, good morning. Hey, hey, Steve, how you doing? All is well, sir. How is your day, and what do you got on your mind? Uh, great show. I love the new format. You guys are doing a wonderful job. Thank you very much. So, listen, we uh, used to frequent a place down in Golden Valley behind uh, Glenwood Hills Hospital and Theaterworth Golf Course. It was called uh, B 
B-A-B, which stands for Bare Ass Beach. Oh, I think it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, I believe it still is. Uh, I haven't been there in quite a while, but as a 16-year-old, you know, we wanted to go see if there might be any naked ladies down there. Sure. sure. So we'd, we'd pack up the bikes and put a case of beer on the back and a uh, sack of Jawea or whatever and <laughs> down, and uh, <laughs> suck down a few brews. Well, we'd sit down there and puff, uh, puff a little and uh, pontificate on great ideas. Well, my brother came up with a great idea for uh, – they just came out with the yard trampoline. And he said, why don't we take one of them giant inner tubes out of one of these big uh, – caterpillars and strap a, t- a trampoline to it put it in the water you know some of us thought uh, yeah idea. yeah others, sure others thought you know well maybe and some of us laughed but sure enough it wasn't uh but a few years later there you see them out in the lake oh yeah they're all over the place strapped, strapped to the big inner tube oh yeah just a couple of summers ago <laughs> i did a yeah we were having a belly flop contest off one of those bad boys up on cross there yeah. you go. Yeah, you, you can get some height. We're, we're sitting there one time, and uh, some old hippie dude comes walking up to us, and he's got like a suitcase. He's in a golf shirt. Uh oh. He looks like uh, <laughs> it looks a little out of place, and he's got a, a a briefcase suitcase looking thing. And he he asked if he could partake with us. We said, "Well, sure." He sat down. He said, "I'll let you make a phone call." And we looked at him like. He was higher than us, and uh, <laughs> he opened this suitcase up. And this was early '80s, I believe. He opened the suitcase up, and sure enough, there was a phone. You know, with all the the, the gadgets at the time, yeah, in this suitcase. And he let my buddy make a phone call, either to his mom or his girlfriend. I can't remember. And he said, "You'll never believe where I'm calling you from. I'm at the beach." And they laughed and hung up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but this guy told us, he says, if you guys got any kind of money, you want to invest in cellular technology. I'm telling you, it's the next big thing. Sure. I, who? Here I am. Yeah. Here I am driving at work right now, talking to you guys on a cellular. <laughs> yeah, but, right. You know, if I had a little more sense back in the day, right? I just, I love the fact that just like some hippie came out of nowhere on bare ass beach in the middle of the night yeah. to smoke some ganj with you and had a <laughs> had this suitcase yeah. phone. <laughs> sure. Are you sure it wasn't a vision? (laughs) I love it. It it was the real deal. All right. Here we are all talking on them nowadays. That's perfect. Marty, thank you for the call, man. We appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys rock. Yeah. Yeah, I can only imagine what that call cost because in 1991 or early 92, I had a car phone. Uh, which I used once. I used it on one trip. I drove from Atlanta up to Kentucky, visited my mom, saw some friends, drove back home a couple days later, and on that drive made several phone calls from my car phone. (laughs) And the bill came, and it was like $711. And I was like, what in the world? And every time you'd cross the state line, it would ring, and it would have like a recorded, you are now dear roaming charges. I'm like, hey, that I love that B-52 song, Rome. I just yeah. My brain would go off in a million tangents. I, I literally was on the phone for less than an hour cumulatively, and it was, it was, oh, it was, it was like six or seven hundred dollars. Oh, damn. I was like, well, we're done with that. <laughs> Never going to turn that sucker on again. Man, Candace, is there another caller? Steve from Forest Lake. Steve, good morning, sir. Morning. What's happening over there? Back, uh, well, actually, I'm 50 miles away from there now. All right. Um, so back in 79, I'm 18 years old. I'm working for an Amico in Roseville. And the uh, local bank appraisers, they have their company cars, and they come in. And, uh, you know, you had diners, clubs, and so you could buy meals on a, on a fuel credit card. Right. I said to them, you know, one day we're going to have our paycheck put on our credit card. And we're going to be able to do everything just from our credit card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was 1979. <laughs> so, you know, I'm 18 years old. Uh, do you think that has come true? <laughs> Are you calling us from your private jet at 30,000 feet? Uh, no. From, All right. Uh, yeah. From the, from the semi, I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, every 
now and again, the portal opens and we see a glimpse. We yeah. get a glimpse of the future, and <laughs> and, and the rarer the rarer person is the one who goes, "Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that happen. I'll be the guy with that yeah. great idea." Oh. Man, well, Steve, thank you for the call, brother. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Yeah, I love that one. There's a lot of those. Here's Tracy checking in on the KQ Facebook post. Had to come up with an invention in third grade. One night I saw my hardworking dad trying to get out of the recliner. I thought, you know, if they put a motor under that to kind of help him get up. Oh, come on. I presented it to my class. Remember teachers? Teachers would say this back in the day. Kids wouldn't know this. But what did the teacher say? My teacher directly told me it was the stupidest thing she'd ever heard of. (laughs) I could have been a millionaire by fourth grade. Oh I'm surprised the teacher gosh. didn't go down and patent well, it. Well, th- she might have. The Remember, teacher certainly may have well, may well have done that. Remember when teachers used to say we were stupid? Yeah. Sarah had an idea. People leave their cars out at night. Garage door openers are in those cars. I thought, why not put a keypad on them so if the car does get broken into, they can't use the garage door opener. Or you don't need the garage door opener. You could just get in with a keypad. Doesn't that sound wow. futuristic it if we does. had something like that? Uh, I, I know this in 1992. I've said a few things from the early 90s. That's when all that's when it was all. I'm still paying attention. Um, uh, two things happened with technology that was way ahead, and I, I I couldn't believe it. First time I went to Japan, I got into a taxi in '92 that had GPS, like a map on the dashboard. Yeah, 1992. Right, and I was like, whoa, hold on, <laughs> we are now on uh, on another planet. And in 1998. Uh, in Sweden, I saw wireless internet for the first time. Oh. I mean, way before I saw that over here. Right. In a moving bus, a guy from the record company was on his laptop, and he was typing away, and it looked like he had email. I said, what do you, I just thought he was writing emails to then later send. I said, what are you doing? He goes, emails. I go, I mean, you're just like answering them now, and you'll send them when we get to a place with with internet? He goes, I'm sending them right now. And I said, how? He goes, wireless internet. I thought he was joking. I was like, there's no way. What are you talking about? I'm lifting the laptop. There's no there's no cables. It's not plugged in anything. I could not believe there was a thing called wireless internet. It was mm-hmm. a couple years before you saw that over here. And I was like, man, I again, I never I'm I'm always in absolute denial about the future. When it's right in front of me, I see it coming. I just have this thing. I did not like Netflix. I hated the idea of DVDs coming to the house. Why? I like going to the video store. I talk to the clerk. He makes a recommendation. Yeah. We talk about movies. Who wants that to go away? Mm. I, I remember thinking, this will never work. Everybody loves going to the video stores. I didn't think Amazon would work because I love bookstores. Yeah. Who doesn't want to go to the bookstore and walk the aisles and look at the cool book covers and then remember that book you were always going to read and then you get it and then yeah. you may not read it. But I, I, my wife would literally go, Oh no! This guy's you. You can order a book online. And it comes to your house in two days. Yeah, bookstores are dead. Yeah. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> you're out of your mind. Same thing. Same thing with Netflix with Blockbuster. She's like, no, no, this is over. No one's gonna want to go to the video yeah. store. And I'm like, you're such a cynic. And she's like, no, you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a caveman. Hopeless romantic is yeah, a, that's is a is. nicer way to put it, I think. But yeah, no, I, you know, I was just reading a Popular Mechanics the other day, and I'm trying to wrap my head around it, and now I know. You know, now we've been living in this blazing fast world of technology so fast. Don't even get me started on AI. But uh, they said the phones. Why are we still carrying phones around? We're going to be looking back five years from now going, can you believe we carried these things around in our pockets and we dropped them and they well, were what's, broken? What's going to replace them? Well, they have a whole bunch of things from a little chip that they'll put in our wrist. I know. No, you're not oh, putting a chip in me. Dick but Tracy. Ten years from now, we'll be going, remember when they said they wouldn't put a chip in me? Yeah. I have like 25 in me now. It's the only thing keeping me alive you know uh but uh they had a they had a, a variety of things from a, just a little thing like a, a hearing aid that you would yeah. wear embedded in your ear that will be will make uh laptops cell phones everything obsolete oh, you man. know and now you look at these new apple headsets that have come out i yeah. did try one recently mm-hmm. uh that one of the prototypes they have out at the apple store and it's kind of mind-blowing and you're thinking if they get this th- it's in a big goggle form think ski goggles now they get it that once it uh, they streamline that a little bit here in a couple of years, uh, yeah, forget the phones. Forget the uh, computers. I mean, we're just going to put on our glasses and it's all going to be there. You're going to be having a conversation with someone uh, while you uh, do a little shopping on Amazon. There was a... Um, well, see, or whatever. Now, now, yeah, no, no. Pick my, another now, thing. Now my head's just spinning. Surf porn, then. Uh, 
<laughs> while you're having a chat. While Sir, you're on the air this here. is a Wendy's. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, you, uh, you asked what I what I wanted in terms of food. I'm sorry. I was I know. giving a very in-depth description of what I'm seeing right now. Right. Um, hey, if you like pets, check this out. This this is a story from last week, but there's an update. So in, in the UK, a, a family that is literally worth billions put an ad in a very uh, fancy staffing website. There's a staffing website called Fairfax and Kensington or Fairfax and Kensington. Place the ad in Fairfax and Kensington. They're looking for a dog center, sitter, but they don't call it a dog sitter. They call it a live-in dog nanny. <laughs> They're trying to hire someone. Here's the deal. You can apply online. They have two dogs. They want you to come and live with them. Again, a this is an American billionaire who's based in the UK, I should say. He's not British. You're going to travel with the family every occasionally. Uh, private, of course. No, you're never going to be at, in an airport lounge. You're going to be traveling privately. You will have two dogs under your guardianship. They need, quote, top-tier care. You must treat them like valued members of the family. You're going to live with them in this house. You have to coordinate vet appointments, keep their health records straight. You have to personal make sure that they are exercising personally. You're going to accompany them again on domestic as well as international trips. You have to organize play dates with other dogs, blah, blah, blah. You're going to live for free. You're going to have expenses paid. Oh, and it pays $127,000 a year. Damn. To watch two dogs. Oh, and you get to travel the world. You know... I mean, this sounds almost too good to be true, but why do I have a feeling you'll earn every penny of that? Not dealing with the dogs, that'll be the easy, but dealing with the dog owners. Well, the fact that the ad says these dogs must be treated, quote, like valued members of the family. Well, yeah. the family's not going to treat them like that. You are. No. But still, the point remains. But now that ad was just pulled because of the overwhelming number of applicants. Thousands, tens of thousands of people yeah. applied. And they're like, all right, we're, we're going to pick one out of here. But somebody's going to have that job here pretty soon it's one thing to be living with a billionaire and be expected to like make sure their kids turn out okay which is impossible <laughs> right but honestly just a couple dogs man there was a time in my life i would have jumped through a flame and hoop for that gig oh no kidding six figures they'll pay for the travel and you're right they'll be gone most of the time they'll be doing what rich people do they'll treat yeah, you like a dog probably way, but who am i kidding that time is right now <laughs> I, would, I would still try to get that gig what about moving to an island for ninety two thousand dollars they'll move you to the island move you into your own little pad and pay you nearly a hundred thousand dollars we're talking easy money we're talking money that didn't happen because you didn't come up with the invention you sat around uh, talking about it, bare ass beach with a hippie smoking guns. Sure. Whatever you've got, go to the KQ Facebook page. Give us a call in the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line. We'll tell you about these islands coming up too. This is a real deal. But of course, there's always a bit of a catch. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, ninety two KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, June the 26th. We've been talking about ideas, ways that you could have cashed in big, the brilliant idea, the genius idea to overhaul society that none of us actually followed through <laughs> with. On the Facebook page, Chad wrote, skin-colored Band-Aids. Oh. I even met with the company about getting a patent for the Band-Aids. They wanted $12,000 down to help me even get the process started. Early 20s, didn't have that kind of money. Man. That was a good one. You're sitting there putting a Band-Aid on one day, and you're like, why doesn't this look more like my hand or my finger or my skin so it's not so obvious? Yeah, that's a tough one. That's yeah. a tough one. Sometimes, though, sometimes though, money just chases you. Sometimes money just shows up, and all you got to do is live. <laughs> Check this out. Right. If you want to live on an island off the coast of Ireland, which is, Ooh. I'm sure, just absolutely gorgeous, they'll pay you. The, the nation that is Ireland is uh, asking people to move to some of the remote Irish islands, of which there are 30 of them. Um, there's a program from the government called Our Living, I Our Living Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to rejuvenate 30 sparsely populated offshore spots. Now, there's mm -hmm. there's Aranmore Island off the coast of County Donegal. 150-foot uh, cliffs dominate the skyline. There's a place called Bear Island. It's a quiet paradise for walkers, cyclists, bird washers, plant lovers. Then there's Innis Moor, which was where they shot that movie, The Banshees of Inisherin, which is gorgeous. I mean, yeah. this is 
beyond movie set stuff. This is really, really beautiful. If you want to live on a remote island off the coast of Ireland, they'll pay you up to ninety-two grand to move there. It's a 10-year-long strategy. They want to create more thriving communities that can flourish for generations. Now, you've got to be willing to embrace this lifestyle. There are not bridges connecting these islands to the mainland. You are at the whim of the tides as far as getting a ferry to get across to the mainland. There's not a lot happening on a lot of these islands. You know, Some of them have a total of like 100 people living there. Um, you get to watch, you know, sheep, I guess, hang out. You get to watch oh. grass grow. Yeah. Um, I mean, do they have the internet, do you think? They, <laughs> they, bears, they got sheep. Yeah, they got sheep. Okay. Um, I mean, but, so I don't need to bring a woman, but. Now, there is a catch. <laughs> Easy, steady. Right. It's still the morning. There all is right. a catch. Um, they're trying to revitalize all of these abandoned properties. So, yes, you are going to have to purchase and own a property as long as it was built before 1993 and as long as it's been vacant for two years. Now, again, there's a ton of those over there. Right. The money you're paid can only go to improving that property. So it's not like it's just money for nothing. But if you're able to buy the property, then they'll give you 92 grand to fix it up to make it uh, livable for long term again, rejuvenate the property, and then you're living there. Maybe you enjoy the sound of just crashing ocean waves and the brisk sea air, and you get one of those cute Irish sweaters, and you grow a beard, and then you look like McCartney in the early '70s. And I guess life is great as long as you can write songs. I don't know. <laughs> I would. I. This sounds idyllic. Um, I'm. I grew up in an Irish family. Uh, we ignored the fact that my mom was like half German. So, you know, that quarter German in me, no, we're Irish. That's it. I would love this for a little while. Yeah, that's for, the thing, For right? a little while. You know, I, I like people. I like being around a lot of people. I like noise. I don't know. I, I really don't think I could handle it. You know how I would love it? If you did it and then a couple of times a year invited me to come crash yeah. with you yep. for a couple mm. of weeks, you know, that would be cool. But you're right. It would... I feel like I'm getting closer to, you know, this concept in my life, but mm -hmm. I'm just not quite willing to completely check out of society. But, uh, boy, it's awfully tempting, isn't it? Yeah, yes. it, it, it sounds, it truly sounds perfect. And we all know someone who actually could do this. Our job is to get that person to do it, and then, to your point, up, have us over a couple times a year. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, when your friend wants to buy a boat. Absolutely. Even though you had a terrible experience Absolute, with one, yeah. you want them to buy one. Yeah, I think you had to get a boat immediately. You know, No, a beach house, a mountain house, a boat, an yeah. island dwelling. There's a million things that my friends should own. And in mm -hmm. fact, now that I think about it, I need to be a little bit more discerning with my new friends. I need to, I need to check out. You know, if we're gonna hang and we get to know each other, I need to see what you got. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I need, I need more friends who have places off the coast of Ireland. I don't have any now. I need one at least. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I'm just, you know, I. But again, it's like if did you see the banshees of Inisherin or Inisherin, however you say it? It's gorgeous, and like they, they, these guys are just walking around this remote island, yeah. and there's like one pub, and there's one little restaurant, there's one little inn, and you just think, wouldn't that just be perfect? I would be so tired of seeing the same eleven people after like a week, though. It would it would right. make me nuts, especially if you were. I mean, what if you moved? In? What if your neighbor was that a hole? You know? Yeah. What if it because you moved in, you bought the pad, or they gave you ninety two thousand dollars to fix up yours mm -hmm. and then the one just down the road is that dork from chicago i'm just using it as an example but another sure. uh, you know just a american fool that moved in down the road isn't this great isn't it wonderful i'll help you fix up your house and you'll help me i'll be like okay i'm just gonna paddle up the ocean and let it take me now yeah pretty much what about, go ahead i was just gonna say well what about your own island there's a private island. I don't know what the median price of a home in the Twin Cities is. I'll have to ask my good buddy John Schuster, but there is an island in the Caribbean, the entire island, for sale for $440,000. Okay. I mean, now, that, that's, a, that's like a price of a house if you were able to get a mortgage. But listen, it's interested. also has a 28-foot uh, tall watchtower, its own dock, its own boardwalks, its own house. I'm looking for that right here, the, the house, but it has a house on it. Probably located 12 miles off the coast of Bluefields, uh, Nicaragua, wherever that is. Uh, future by wow. a heli. Oh, it has plenty of room to add a helipad and swimming pool. Uh, man, it's a migrating spot for local butterflies. I can get my own island and butterflies. And butterflies and the structure. I no mean, you've brainer. Got, you've got a house on there for $440,000. I mean, it's not chump change, but 
if you're buying a house around here, you're going to plunk down that much money. Oh, this does say cell service and Wi-Fi. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can I can be on my own island off the coast of Nicaragua in a in an in an island Caribbean paradise and still binge watch the bear. Yeah. I'm interested. It's the it's, it's called Iguana Island. Does that mean there's a lot of oh, iguanas on. on it? Well, Are that's, you being, name. that's what it's called. It said that you can be the owner of Iguana Island. Well, you can name it whatever the hell you want when you get rid of all the iguanas. Yeah. Well, the, as long as it's not like Snake Island off the coast of Brazil, which is literally covered, it's more yeah. snakes per square inch than well, any other place on earth. If, if, yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, Steve Gorman, I believe you have some sort of fixation on iguanas. If we were to watch your wedding tape, for example, might oh. we see an iguana? Speaking of Caribbean and iguana, yeah, yeah. I, my wife was telling someone this story just the other day. <laughs> uh, we got married on St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and uh, only if, you know, my, my brother and his wife and Rosemary's sister and my mom and a sister, there's only five other people at the whole wedding. It was very small. We just, we, we went away, got married, few people on hand. And then we had a big party like a month later in Atlanta where everybody, like our families could all be there. Um, videotape, uh, back in the day when it was actually tape in a video player in the camera, uh, my, my sister-in-law videotaped the wedding and then... I didn't really want to watch the wedding itself for a while. I'm like, no, I I like the way I remember it. It's there, you know, no mm -hmm. reason to put it up. So a few days had passed, and then it was like, okay, let's just see what it looks like. Let's just put the tape in. And apparently somebody had already watched the wedding on the tape, and then they rewound the tape, which I never did. I, I you know, if you put a tape in the camera back in the old days, this is antiquated early 90s. Uh, my whole thing was like, no, don't don't rewind it because you're going to tape over something, and that was always a big no no with me. Yeah. Uh, but it had been rewound, and then of course, by the time I wanted to watch the wedding, and I put the tape in right at the moment when the guy's about to, when we're about to do the vows, and we're really right in the middle of the ceremony, all of a sudden, bam. I had seen a couple days after the wedding an iguana that I needed to videotape. I got to get this on camera. It's an iguana. He's on a tree branch doing nothing. <laughs> and so you literally, if you're watching the video, so I recorded right over our own ceremony uh, of an iguana doing nothing. Yeah. But, well, but was... yeah, the water was crystal clear in the background. <laughs> you could see uh, Great Cruise Bay right there looking good, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what that was. So, yeah, you put Caribbean and iguana to me and it's like but you know the truth is i do remember the wedding i have pleasant memories yeah. of the wedding i don't need to see what it looked like from a camera that was probably grainy at best back in the day how often are you gonna go back and watch out with the kids and you're really just kind of probably nice. boring the kids, them at the, some the time, kids would probably like to see that at yeah, some point but once or twice well maybe iguana island is for you maybe that this this is full circle for you. Maybe that's maybe that is a way to make it all right. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to keep doing those little flip uh, cartoon books where I draw them. See, kids, here's me and here's your mom. I don't <laughs> actually do that. I, I can't. I can only draw stick figures. Uh, these things happen. Hey, uh, you know, but, but one other thing I did want to mention. Um, if you're out there getting your steps in every day, you know, there's this 10,000 steps a day yeah. thing. People say you got to get at least 10,000 steps a day just to keep your body moving. And I, that makes perfect sense. I mean, I'm not going to. And now people say it's really more like six or 7,000, but whatever the number is, you got to mm. keep moving. It's a good thing. If you're a 10,000 stepper per day person, there's a company called Jim Bird, and they're looking. They're going to hire someone who they will call a chief step officer. <laughs> and they'll pay you $10,000 to take 10,000 steps in one day. Now, 10,000 steps for me, that's like a five mile walk, right. four to five miles. Yeah. That's not that difficult. And I'm not, I'm hardly in great shape, but I go out, I, I walk three to four miles most days mm -hmm. as it is. I could make it up to 10,000 steps quite easily. This company wants to pay me 10 grand to do that. I'd be like, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Please do. I'll do it like three days a week if you want to. But this is just a one time. To, why are they paying you? Yeah, because that's not a big deal. If I oh, go out, it's, yeah, it's, see, yeah. see, there's always that catch. I'm like, What's oh, it's catch? just a one-off. Well, that then it's uh, see all, all these get-rich-quick schemes. They never work out for me. I've been trying to get that damn Powerball for years, hadn't happened. Mm -hmm. Now I was ready to walk ten thousand steps a day for ten grand a day, hadn't happened. It's only a one-shot deal. I guess I'm going to have to come up with a genius idea and follow through, like skin tone band aids. But I, you know what, I really need. You mm. know, what, the the simplest thing for any of us. If we're trying to have great ideas and cash in, just just invent a time machine. 
<laughs> That's really the one. If yeah. you have one time machine, you can go back and get a hundred new inventions out ahead of the cro- ahead of the, uh, the the rest of the people, and you can cash in big that way. I have two big daydreams. One is if I had a time machine, what would I go back and cash in on? It always revolves around money, and the other one's just winning the lottery outright. Yeah, I'm always trying to get away with not working for a living. Radio is as close as I've come, and that's not a bad consolation. Yep. I like uh, Dave's here on the KQ Facebook page. He used to add cherry Kool-Aid to his Mountain Dew. You see what he did there? He took a Mountain Dew, and he made it cherry-flavored. Okay. He even told his family that he should contact the makers about creating a new flavor. Next thing you know, Oof. Code Red Mountain Dew, yeah, this sure. Mountain Dew, that Mountain yep. Dew. Yeah, Mountain Dew spying on Dave, I think. I, um, I, I, I know of a man, this is a true story, who was at an event... And they had little snacks out. Uh, he's a friend of my old manager in the Black Crows. A great friend of his was a comedy writer for years, and now still is a comedy TV writer in Hollywood. And he had a handful of peanuts. And then while eating a peanut, this is in the this is in the nineties. He grabbed from the bowl of some M and M's, and he had them both in his mouth. And this man announced to a room full of people, "Oh my God, I've got it! We sh- they should take peanuts and M and M's and put them together." And he was just in absolute disbelief. And and Pete looked right at him and goes, yeah, look in the third bowl. That's peanut <laughs> M&M's. And somehow peanut M&M's had eluded this man, Jerry, for years. No. A pe- but you can see it. You got a peanut in your mouth. You yeah. add an M&M and you're like, oh, my God, I have just found the elixir. <laughs> this is pay dirt. He was so excited for like nine seconds. Yeah, right. And then, the, and and then terribly embarrassed. Reality comes crashing down mm. upon us at the most inopportune times. A lot of reality crashing down upon us this morning. Well, listen, we're rolling around on nine o'clock let's hear your big idea that wasn't something you thought was a really good idea or maybe was and someone beat you to it 651-989 rock that's the maple grove lock and safe talk and text line we also have it up at the kq facebook page hang tight it's the kq morning show 92 kqrs i'm steve gorman this is the kq morning show it is monday june the 26th Good morning. We've been talking all morning about great ideas we have had that we didn't follow through with, great ideas someone mentioned to us that we did not invest in, bad ideas that we did invest in. It just, we've just run the whole gamut. Um, And if you are sitting at home thinking, man, What's the next billion-dollar idea to come up with? Well, Maury Povich has already beaten you to it, <laughs> apparently. Maury Povich. We all know Maury. Hosted the Maury Povich show for years. He basically, the show, what he pulled the plug recently, had his final Maury Povich show, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, not that long ago. He has now launched at-home mm-hmm. paternity tests. Oh, Maury nice. Povich can help you at home determine if you are the father or if you, you are, are not, not the father. The father. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. The lunatic. You know, this just came up the other day in a family conversation, not in my immediate family, but a friend of the family saying, well, he just doesn't know if it's his or not because she was kind of fooling around about the time that baby was born. And, you know, you've got the, well, the DNA testing court oh ordered this sure. and get that going. And it's a whole thing. Yeah, if you could just go down to the local whatever and buy it over the counter. Oh, there's a lot of people that are this going to make him another billion dollars. Brilliant. He's offering the at-home test through his new company. He calls it The Results Are In, the <laughs> testing kit. Includes materials and instructions for how to take a DNA sample. Then they are sent to a DNA diagnostic center without the need for medical professionals or TV producers. Now, his <laughs> company promises results will be ready within two to three days with a 99.99% accuracy rate oh, and they also say these results will all be confidential are we sure Ma- maury are we <laughs> sure about this 99.99 percent accurate and confidential i don't know man yeah, because right you know because they're only as confidential as the person that got your dna and submitted yeah. the test are going to be in other words it's going on facebook and they're going to tell all their friends and man. i don't know this thing is it admissible in court I uh, I think this is going to be a big seller. People how much? How this. much did Maury? How much money did he print on that show for decades? Now oh, that he's man. not doing TV, he's like, eh, I think I got one last little uh, one last little horizon in front of me. At home paternity testing, mind blowing. I think it's about time. 
You think it's a bad thing, <laughs> do you? And now I have to protect my DNA. It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to outrun them from state to state. Now I'm yeah, gonna be, right. Imagine, they're just going to send, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to, you, DNA is so easy to acquire if you've slept with the person mm. and had a kid with the person and still have some contact. It's any little hair here, yeah. grab their toothbrush on the way out. If you find your toothbrush missing, huh? Oh, man, no kidding. Yeah. I had a dream that I had, you know, I couldn't. I was pregnant and that I didn't know who the father were. I was worried. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to know who it is. Oh, Jeez, boy. Scandalous. Isn't that crazy? Scandalous. <laughs> that is a dream. <laughs> well, now, now all you have to do is uh, distribute DNA. How many of these would you say you'd have to pick up? I mean, maybe a few. <laughs> Jeez. I can't. <laughs> well, well, we'll just get the party pack and keep it handy. And <laughs> we'll take just, one of these with you on the way out. Yeah, we'll ju- you know what we'll do, Candice? We'll, we'll just order a bunch of these for the studio. And when you need one, you, we, won't, we won't even know who's taking them, honey. Yeah. Okay. You, you are the father. There it is. Um, oh, hey, I would yeah. be remiss if I didn't remember this one right now. Right now on the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talking text line, text the word wallet, W A L L E T, to 651989 Rock for a chance to win $92.50 in free gas, as well as tickets to an upcoming show at Medina Entertainment Center, plus a shot at free gas for a year. Text wallet. Wow. To 651-989-ROCK right now. Sponsored by Body Gastroenterology, prize provided by Quick Trip and Medina Entertainment Center. Yeah. Get on the free gas tip. Yeah, I'm definitely that guy that, uh, hey, why don't you just drive to the farm this weekend? You know, mm-hmm. that's about 330 miles. And I'm there I am with the calculator going, well, is it cheaper to fly or drive yeah. these days? Oh, yeah. Of course, I'm just going to drive out to the farm, but it uh, free gas for a year. I got. So I have a trip to Chicago here coming up in a few weeks, and I did the same thing. I was like, "Well, hang on, it's a right. what six hour drive, or they got those sometimes. Uh, you get the special flight, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, constantly going back and forth on my head on that one. Free gas for a year, that'll set you free. That's exactly what that'll do. Amen. I knew a guy uh, in Michigan named Smith. He was a good friend of my cousin's, and Smith grew up, and he had a dog whose name I don't remember, but it was an ugly dog. There's just no getting around <laughs> it. And, in fact, Smith knew his dog was ugly. He thought his dog was so ugly, and this was, to me, the funniest thing I've ever seen. He would only pet the dog with his baseball glove. He would put his baseball glove on and stroke the dog lovingly. And the dog knew when he saw the glove go on, he'd be run over. And it was just, it was a joke that started one day and then turned into a lifelong thing for this dog. He lo- <laughs> Smith loved his dog, yeah. but it was just, it was just looked bad. And it was the funniest thing that you've never seen anything sadder than a guy just lovingly petting a dog, but with a, a baseball glove on. Yeah, that was, what? that was the joke. <laughs> but that dog does not hold a candle to scoop. Scooter, just named Ugliest Dog in America, the Ugly Dog Contest, I'm sorry, Ugliest Dog in the World, a contest in Petaluma, California. Now, people think this is a really cruel thing. No, dog owners love their ugly dogs. Most of them are rescue dogs. They're they're saved at the last minute from oftentimes euthanasia. This dog, for example, had some deformities it was dealing with, and the guy loves this dog, took it care of it. He's had it for years. He's a good little trooper, and now a dog named Scooter is this world's ugliest dog. I can't begin to imagine because, of course, Chauncey's just a bohunk. I mean, good-looking guy. But if I had an ugly dog, you're damn straight I'd enter him in an ugly, ugly dog contest. What a great, what a fun thing to do with a dog that you love to death, probably because it looks so bizarre. Yeah, I mean, why not? It's, I mean, listen, the dogs, although they do under language here, they know what park means or lake or treat and that sort of stuff. They don't. If you sit there and go, you're so ugly, who's the ugliest dog in the world? That dog <laughs> is going to be going crazy. It's- All right, now I'm on the page. What is this breed of dog? Because I feel like there's just one breed of dog in this contest every year because this breed is so ugly. They always have one of these. What is this thing? I think it's it's some hybrid. It's a terrier and then a North American sewer rat and then (laughs) with with a little bit of a you know some sort of like an opossum mixed in there. It's they all. You're right. They all look every year. You see the ugliest dog and it's just like this, usually gray, a base of gray with some other colors it's just it's a standard operation they always have to have their tongue hanging out too i think it's this breed of dog they can't keep their tongue in their mouth here's a little uh audio of scooters oh it's a chinese crested it's called scooters a seven-year-old chinese crested now you guys are nice and warmed up right how about little scooter (laughs) Uh, loves the attention look at that i think that 
does it. Scooter, you're going to New York. <laughs> uh oh, that's that's the prize. You have to go to New York. That seems like insult to injury there. I like, I yeah. like Scooter. Yeah, he's gonna get lots of treats. Oh, he's bald, has backward facing hind legs. Yeah, he's a mess. He's just a complete mess. Steve, I said he has backward facing hind legs. That's all right. I thought Chauncey was some sort of genetic mystery um, with the, you know, Chauncey, if you haven't heard his, as of yet. Uh, that's all internal. His, that, his, yeah. his reversed organs, that's all on the inside. He looks the same. He looks normal from the outside. I thought there was something different about the back legs. Yeah. Obviously, they're backward yeah. back legs. Yeah, it's like the, uh, wasn't the old Dr. Doolittle, he had an animal called the Push Me Pull Me or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it was right. like two heads went in each direction. Yeah, it's pretty close to that. Oh, man. Um, also, and again, and just, so we've, we've got the feel good, ugly dog, got a prize, got a trip to New York. Yeah. How about the feel good firefighter in Ocala, Florida? So firemen at the fire station heard a special alarm inside the firehouse. There is an alarm that, that firemen have because people to this day still will leave babies at fire stations. Like somebody okay. finds themselves with a baby. They think I can't take care of it. A fire station is a safe haven to leave a baby. I mean, that's always, always in the best circumstances, that's a tragedy unfolding where someone can't take care of a newborn. Yeah. Uh, in in January, a fireman in Ocala, Florida, heard that, heard that alarm go off. He runs outside, and sure enough, there's a baby in a basket, I would assume. I just like to think of, uh, sure. you know, whatever, a little swaddling. baby swaddling up in a basket. Mm -hmm. But this particular fireman... Um, Found a newborn baby girl. He and his wife had been trying to adopt a baby for 10 years without oh, well. luck. Call Hollywood. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, put, took the baby to the hospital, left a handwritten note with the baby saying who he was, that he had found this baby. He's a fireman at X and this. He and his wife have applied. They've gone through all the hoops. They're ready to adopt. They're just waiting on the baby. Long story short, this worked out. They have now officially adopted the baby. Someone left the fireman himself who found the baby. They've adopted this child. I just, a story like that, I look at and I just go, oh, that's nice. And then I think about it, I'm like, no, that's actually really nice. Yeah. That story could have only ended worse. Right. And it turned out the one great way this guy was looking for the baby, found the baby. Isn't that great? That I is just, great. Just a, just a nice little Monday morning pick me up. That does feel nice to hear that. I wonder, I wouldn't condone this. I certainly wouldn't advocate it. But I guess if you're, if you're trying to go through the adoption process, I understand that it can take some sure. time to get through that process or perhaps. It can. Or perhaps you have a sordid past. I don't know. And you've got yourself, Who your knows? stuff all worked out now. Maybe you just mm -hmm. case fire departments, you know, wait for someone to drop off a kid. Probably doesn't happen very often, though. And and if that's not enough good news, I got one more for you. What I'm going to throw it your way. Right. Not something I'm concerned with, not something you're concerned with. But, however, baldness is a thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of men want that hair back on the head. Uh, the key to not going bald may very well have been found on your back. Scientists have discovered a molecule called osteopontin that has not been previously linked to hair growth is very active in growing hairs out of moles. Mm -hmm. So there's a study that says this compound could be put into the scalp of balding men and women to reawaken dormant hair follicles. It's a process not unlike uh, Botox injections, but they could put this uh, this molecule right into the where your hair follicles that have turned off the fountain, basically. Anti-balding technique. It's already being tested on mice. Of course, got to see what those mice are doing. <laughs> uh, undergo clinical trials with people this summer. This is a big one. If it if it if it actually checks out, if it works, all to right. think that you could take a molecule already found in your body, because we all know somebody who's got that mole with a giant hair growing oh, out of it. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I'm picturing. I may it's or not may not have been that guy myself. Oh, did you yeah. have the mole with I the got hair? a lot of moles. I'm a moly little <laughs> Irish moly, pasty moly, guy. Moly, moly, moly. I'm, a, I'm a holy moly guy, and every now and again, I'll look down, and I'm like, there's a one big hair growing out of that mole <laughs> and i pluck but, but i also but but because i still have a lot of hair on my head i don't think about it possibly being the key to ending my male yeah. pattern baldness it's not gonna grow moles on your head though i hope just the hair they just want the molecule that produces the hair although if you did grow moles on your head from across the street it might look like you get a nice crew cut <laughs> <laughs> that was that scene so funny in Austin Powers with uh, Mole. Fred Savage. <laughs> Couldn't stop saying mole. mole. I didn't, what did mole? Oh, 
Or did your so mom funny. what? Because <laughs> it's true. I mean, that mole was my gosh. Yeah, that was sure, yeah, the size of my hometown. It was big. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's like the uh, the in laws a movie I always reference when 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 uh, when uh, uh, Vince Ricardo played by Peter Falk says to Alan Arkin, he goes, "Don't say anything about the scar." And he goes, "The scar." He goes, "You'll see it, but don't see it." You know what I mean? And the general walks in. He's got a giant. <laughs> looks like the letter Z on his cheek. <laughs> yeah. And the first thing Alan Arkin says is a Z. Like you can't <laughs> just burst it out. Yeah. You see somebody. You see someone whose head is covered in moles. You're going to mention the moles. Yeah. That's you're going to mention the moles. But nice. like I said, from across the street, though. It'll look just like that G.I. Joe with lifelike hair from the 70s. Remember those? Mm, that was yeah. lifelike, wasn't it? It sure was. <laughs> it's like when I grow a beard. From across the street, it looks like a real full beard. I know. I've seen some photos. With it's... every step you get closer, you're like, it's kind of splotchy. And then by the time you're right next to me, you're like, dude, it's just, you have a beard comb over going. <laughs> yeah. It looks good from a, from a distance. Maybe you ought to get some of that uh, mole molecule, uh, you know, uh, injected into your cheeks, I, into your I would, jawline. I mean, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm envious. I wish I could go like grizzly adams like the full you know the man beard would would be something i would i would probably sport year round if i could do it in a way nice. that gave me confidence as opposed to gave me you know rampant insecurity haven't stopped me hasn't stopped me haven't stopped me hasn't stopped me i know no, mine's bad and i'll say that every once in a while when i get my haircut they'll say you want to want us to do anything with the beard i'm like you're being kind calling it a beard <laughs> and no one ever disagrees with me no yeah like no. shave it off nope i'm gonna keep it it's my trashy beard, and I'm attached to it. No one likes it. Although my kids did this weekend once again say, "Dad, it's time to mow the grass." Really? Yeah, it's getting a little, getting a little for the warm weather. You know, it's the KQ Morning Show, ninety two KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show, Monday, June the twenty sixth. There are no shortage of true crime TV shows, true crime podcasts, true crime books, true crime everything. We are creating generations of home detectives with all of the true crime obsessions in our society these days. And now the Tucson, Arizona Police Department is creating basically a real place to go if you want to be a detective but don't want to go through all that rigmarole of being a cop first. <laughs> like literally, there the Tucson Police Department has started a new job called professional staff investigator. Mm -hmm. You get to be a detective kind of without being a cop at all. There is a little bit of training. Okay, so you would go through seven weeks at a police academy, and then you have three months of field training, hmm. and you need to already have an associate's degree or two years' experience in a related field, like public safety, loss prevention, crime scene, crime scene management. But you don't get a gun. You don't get to be on the scene first, but you, and you can't arrest anybody, but you can while still being a civilian, you get to visit crime scenes, you collect evidence, you interview subjects, you do get to call the bad guys and say, that's the man, and then you look at a cop and say, arrest him. <laughs> I like the shortcut here. Seven weeks sounds like, I mean, basic training, I think, is about eight weeks for yeah. the military, but um, uh, that does sound fairly involved. Of course, that college degree thing is a Stickler, but not for a lot of people. You're right. Everyone is a sleuth at home. And I mean, sure. it, didn't, it didn't take true crime podcasts, crime shows, you know, since they started broadcasting. Heck, go back to the of old just radio days. Well, this is uh, Lieutenant Mark Jimenez talking about this opportunity. You know, there's been different things in the media where community members help solve cases. So we want to get those people. We want to get that untapped potential. Once this is all done, they're going to go through a seven-week academy. Then they're going to go through 12 weeks of field training. And then once they're done, their day is going to look very similar to our other detectives. They'll be able to go to any scene uh, once the scene is safe. So they won't be first responders. They won't have a gun. <laughs> if they interview a suspect, that person will have to be made completely safe, and they'll have a sworn officer with them. All right. So the stuff you talked about, basically, I mean, does this, uh, can you make some serious dough do in this? 20 to 30 bucks an hour. Uh, Not bad. They're no, good. I mean, they, yeah. they want 20 of these. They want to fill 20 of these spots. All right. In a, in a city the size of Tucson, there are at least 20 people who fit all the criteria right. that want nothing more than to take home their version of a jigsaw puzzle, but it's a crime. I, I, I This is going to turn into a thing, I'd be willing to bet. I, I mean, it's going to have some blowback. There will be some mistakes made along the way. There's already mistakes being made along the way in investigations. <laughs> well, You've got yeah. an awful lot of people armchair quarterbacking their way through a life of true crime that are going to jump at this. And, and I guarantee you there will be stories of, 
Well, I was just mixing the chicken salad, and it dawned mm-hmm. on me. Wait a minute! He dropped the dental floss in the toilet, oh. hmm. not the trash can. Right. And next thing you know, you know your neighbor Bernice is on the cover of the paper with the, with the bust <laughs> of the century. Well, it'll, you don't have to kick in any doors here. You know, you're not putting your life on the line, I guess. And as long as there's always a real detective, you know, bef- yeah. you know, there is sort of the stopgap before you start slapping cuffs on anyone or before you inject them to death. Uh, probably not a bad idea because there are true crime podcast clubs, like book clubs now that get together. How juicy would it be to, hey, gang, I've got a real one. No, I mean a real one. Pretty soon it's uh, uh, you know, that's a Scooby-Doo. Good point. You wouldn't have to tell your book club that you're doing this for real. You don't have to split the profits, You but you mm-hmm. get you get that brain trust involved. <laughs> and next thing you know, you know, like I said, you're, you're one minute you're making finger sandwiches. The next minute you got a blue ribbon from the mayor. <laughs> not bad, I guess. And it's a good little side hustle. I mean, you couldn't do it full time probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I don't why think not? So. There's and, a, 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 a but before I forget, there is a bit of a heat wave moving in. I'm going to be down south later this week. It's going to be brutally hot all across yeah. America uh, in the 80s here this week. But that's, I mean, it's toasty, but but yeah. it's not nearly as bad as, you know, there's triple digits all across the southwest and Texas is getting crushed. Here's a few hacks that we read about if you're trying to get a good night's sleep with the summer heat and struggling. Here's a few things they do suggest to do. Number one. I'm not making this up. Freeze your pajamas. Oh. <laughs> or as oh, or as they used to call them, pajamas. Yeah, that might feel nice. Put them in a plastic bag, toss it in the freezer. You can also do the same with your pillowcase. How about mm. this? No. <laughs> I'm not freezing pajamas and then putting them on my body. There's just no way. Yeah, you know, that's a shock to the... How about just the refrigerator? Just cool them I off. I could cool maybe. them off. Yeah. I couldn't freeze them. Yeah. Not a chance. How about this one? Use a hot water bottle. It seems counterintuitive, but here's the deal. If you raise your core temperature before you go to bed... When you take it off, your body gets tricked into thinking it's much colder than it is. So this says fill a hot water bottle with warm water, put it on your feet. It'll warm your core temperature. And then when you remove it, as your body's cooling, you'll have tricked your brain into thinking that you're cooler than you really are. Air conditioning, anyone? I guess I guess there's a lot of people who don't want to pump. Yeah. You know, you're going to pay a lot of money for those yeah. AC bills. Uh, but a key here, they say, and I've heard this many times, do not sleep naked. Oh, that was my, what? yeah, I was Do not sleep off. naked. Oh, wow. Uh, if you sweat in your sleep, it'll collect on your skin instead of your clothes absorbing the sweat. Oh. Wear something loose-fitting made of a natural fiber, like a cotton, just a nice cotton t-shirt, some shorts, you know, you're, you're better. Don't tell better me served. how to sleep, Steve Gordon. I'm, I'm telling you what the experts are saying, Candace Wheeler. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you how to sleep off mic, okay? One of my favorite <laughs> things about life is being able to sleep naked. I think that's like one of the greatest things of all time. That's one of the great joys in your life. Yeah, actually, it feels so nice. It does. I mean, everything's loose and just out there. Yeah, and yeah it's, <laughs> it's freeing, really, in a in certain way. But I see what they're saying. If you're sweating in your PJs, you know, and then that that cold water kind of that turns that gets you cool. You could get a little well, hypothermic a, at night. Yeah, there's a reason people that live in like deserts they don't walk around right. bar- barely dressed. They cover their bodies, and it's because you are going to sweat, but you want to get something that breathes fabric wise that will pull the sweat away from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that all I know is this: I one of the reasons there's a lot of reasons I don't live in a desert, but one of them is because I don't want to ever have to put that theory to the test. Right. Yeah, yeah, there's a no. lot of reasons not to live in the desert. In fact, all of the reasons not to live. I don't know why people do. I guess they just good for your joints, they say. Yeah. The the heat is good for your arthritis. I it works for yoga. I know that. It, you know, the hot yoga. Yeah. Uh, I've done hot yoga and then one time I tried to do yoga in a room that wasn't really hot. I I could I was like, "No. Uh-uh. No, I got to <laughs> I this is cr- this makes no sense to me at all." I was like, "Wait, this is what yoga is supposed to be? No way. I'm supposed to be in a sweat box. I'm supposed to be miserable. I'm supposed to be questioning the meaning of life. <laughs> I need to be I need to be sweating out like like Earnhardt in a NASCAR race levels of sweat. You know what I mean? Four hours in the boiling race car. They used to say they lose sixteen pounds every race. That's what I need. <laughs> or then it's just then it's just stretching for for no reason whatsoever. Right. right. Then you just you, then you're cognizant of how silly you look in a lot of those poses. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. All right. Let's look back. How about a 
quick history lesson, everybody, sports and music history. On this day, June 26, 1981, Magic Johnson signed a deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, he had played two years of professional basketball, and he signed a 25-year deal with the Lakers. 25 years. And here is the thing that people couldn't get over. Not that he signed a quarter of a century deal, but that it was for 25 million dollars that's right one million dollars a year in 1981 was enough to blow people's minds yeah everybody said the lakers were out of their minds for giving someone a million dollars to play basketball that would be within a decade like a punchline to a joke within a decade no within yeah. three or four years it was a joke that the greatest point guard ever was only getting a million dollars a year they reworked his deal within a few years after that of course but i love the idea of of someone going why don't we just lock you down for 25 years well after you've retired you know and and again we couldn't believe it a million dollars to play basketball in 1981 was it's just like in Austin Powers when Mr. Evil says one million dollars <laughs> and his people go, um, you've been in a coma for way too long. You got to up that number uh, pretty substantially. The KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS.